Today we're in Cardiff Bay to interview Andrew R.T. Davis, the leader of the Welsh Conservative Party. They have 11 Assembly members in this building behind me and what we want to find out is their policies on political engagement, their thoughts on Brexit and other important political issues. Andrew, the turnout for the 18 to 24 year old age group in the EU referendum was around 30 to 35 percent. It was very bleak and there are equally as bad turnouts in elections too. So do you think the young people actually care about politics? I think they do care about politics. I mean, uh, I go around many schools, for example, and colleges to talk in particular to sixth formers, uh, and there's a real passion there uh, to understand what politicians uh, do on their behalf, uh, to understand what policies are put forward on their behalf, but also to put ideas forward themselves uh, and try and get engaged in the democratic process. Uh, but it is a fact that many youngsters have lots of other distractions, whether they're moving around the country in search of different jobs or colleges or universities. Uh, and so I think it's a combination of factors that uh, lead to some of these lower turnouts where we'd like to see far higher turnouts. Mm. And why do you think it is important to vote? Well, I think it's important to vote because ultimately the decisions that affect you, your family, your community, your country uh, are made in democratic institutions like this, the National Assembly or Westminster, um, because we live in a democracy. Uh, and the revolutionary point about democracy is that every couple of years we all get the chance to cast our opinions on who we want to run the country for the next four or five years. And if you don't cast your ballot, then really you're disenfranchising yourself because the easiest thing in the world to do is to go down the local pub, whine, moan, groan about the state of the country, about the state of your street, about your neighbourhood or whatever, uh, and then say, well, I didn't bother because they're all the same. Well, politicians aren't all the same. There is a difference uh, and you do have a choice to make, it, make a change. And imagining a scenario whereby you were the First Minister for Wales, what would your priorities be for improving the lives of young people? Well, I think they'd be threefold, really. Uh, the first would be economically to get this country moving uh, because we need to create quality jobs with decent take-home pay that rewards young people for the education and the study that they've undertaken, whether that be an academic study or vocational study, because we need to retain our young people here in this great country of Wales uh, to make sure we've got a prosperous economy. Then what I want to make sure is that we do have a very robust education system that reflects on the individual's talents. It's not all about academia. You know, vocational courses and vocational schemes are just as important as academia and we need to make sure that we value the individual rather than just corporatise education and say we've got to take this particular cohort of students in a particular direction. Uh, so you need to celebrate vocational courses while strengthening our higher education institutions and our FE colleges so that no one is left behind and no one has a second-rate education system. Uh, and then, of course, it is about the job of government to deliver good quality public services that respond to the needs of people. And whether you're young, old or middle age, at some point in your year, uh, you will need to call on those public services to help you. It might be as simple as a cough or a cold, or it might be something that you've happened to you playing sport, like breaking a leg or something like that. But that's the health service working for you, whether you're young, middle aged or old. Uh, and we do need good quality public services that respond to the needs of the people of Wales and sadly in the first 17 years of devolution that hasn't been the case. Now for a quick fire round, no long-winded <laughs> answers. Okay. Is the Conservative Party full of rich people? Not at all. Compulsory voting, yes or no? No. Voted 16, yes or no? We have a free vote on that but from my own personal view, no. Okay. Do you want immigration in, uh, in Wales reduced? Well, I believe immigration is a good thing. Uh, I believe people's ability to move around is something that enriches society both culturally and economically. But I do get it that people do have concerns about immigration and it's for us as policy makers to respond to those concerns. Do you support an early general election? Well, that's in the gift of the Prime Minister at the end of the day. I mean, the Conservative Party have a mandate from the 2015 election. That runs to 2020, but circumstances might change in the intervening period. But we know the Prime Minister said that she's not minded to go for an early election. Would you support a, a trident relocation from Scotland to Wales? I don't think there'd be a need for that because Scotland is not going to go independent, but I do support Britain's de ability to defend itself in a world that is a nuclear world. Uh, we need to have a nuclear deterrent. Should Wales have a seat at the negotiations uh, with regards to Brexit? We do. We're part of the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Your preferred voting system? 
um, in, in large. Past, <laughs> as in first past the post or STV? Well, I, I think certainly first past the post has its merits in certain uh, democracies, and in particular when you're talking about Westminster, for example, it's tried, it's tested, it's proved. Uh, but I do think that when you come into the devolved administrations, there is scope to expand the proportional representation model that we've had here since 1999. And I think that will be a debate going forward because we know there's a discussion about increasing uh, assembly members in this institution. Who would you vote for in the US presidential election if you lived in America? I'd most probably sit that one out because I think both of them are quite challenging for their own particular reasons. <laughs> Do you uh, have a favourite Prime Minister in British history? Uh, well, Winston Churchill, uh, you expect me to say that because at our darkest hour he did lead us uh, and lead us into victory that preserved our democracy that we've got at the moment. Uh, Margaret Thatcher for the way she transformed this country after the Labour Party had bankrupted us through the 70s. Uh, and ultimately, uh, I think successive Prime Ministers through the 90s and, and early 2000s uh, are people that you can reflect on for their own different, different reasons and so whilst the two towering figures for me are Mrs Thatcher and Winston Churchill, uh, I do think that each Prime Minister brings something different to the table, certainly in the last 20-25 years, and as a leader of a party you can learn a lot from analysing and studying them. Could you use one word to sum up the Labour Party? Moribund. And one word to sum up your own party? Ambitious. And finally, can you make your pitch to young people? Why should they select you uh, or vote for the Conservative Party in elections? If you want a future that's different from the past, that unlocks your opportunity and potential, then the Conservative Party is, has got the key to do that. Don't settle for the same old status quo. Unlock the potential, unlock the future, and be bold and ambitious and grab that opportunity. And the Welsh Conservatives are that party that want to work with you to do that. Andrew Artie Davis. Thank you. Thanks very much.